It's difficult to imagine an item of popular culture that once so thoroughly dominated the cultural landscape, only to leave little to no lasting impact in people's memories. When people think of Dallas, they tend to think of two things. Who shot JR and, hey, wasn't there a season that was like, all a dream or something? Mostly younger audiences view this as an old show, best left to boomers and the greatest generation with their Applebee's, their racism, and their not knowing what avocado toast is. But in 2020, a time when we've regurgitated so much of 1980s popular culture already, the wheelings and dealings of a clan of wealthy oil barons can help us understand a lot about the cultural imprint that affects our view of capitalism to this day. For those who don't already know, Dallas was a primetime soap opera that aired on CBS from 1978 to 1991. Most of its inspiration seems to draw from the 1956 film Giant, starring Rock Hudson, Elizabeth Taylor, and James Dean in his last role. Dallas's first season was a five-part miniseries that aired in April and May of 1978, and wasn't intended to become a full series. CBS was so pleased, though, that they ordered a second season to start the following fall, and the series would continue for another 13 seasons. The show initially focused on Bobby Ewing and his new bride Pamela returning home to the family's palatial estate, South Fork. The Ewings built their empire when oil magnate Jock Ewing married cattle princess Ellie Southworth, and the two families combined their fortunes. Jock's son, John Ross Ewing Jr., or JR for short, is the eldest and the one most people associate with the TV show. JR is married to former Miss Texas Sue Ellen, though he keeps several regular women on the side. Bobby and JR's middle brother, Gary, couldn't deal with the hypermasculine ways the Ewings conduct business, so he hit the bottle and ran off, leaving his daughter Lucy to be raised by his parents and siblings. Complicating matters is that Pamela is the daughter of Jock Ewing's old partner and fiercest rival Digger Barnes, who claims that Jock swindled him out of half the oil fortune, and her brother Cliff is a lawyer who has practically declared war on the Ewings. The series tends to follow two overlapping threads, one about the shady business dealings of Ewing Oil, and the other more conventional soap opera fodder. The show ranked 47 on TV Guide's list of the greatest series of all time, and the episode in which J.R. Shooter is revealed drew 350 million viewers, about three times the most watched Super Bowl. The show is also a critical success, earning four Emmys. Like most successful series, it spawned a bevy of knockoffs in one spin-off, none of which saw the same success as the original. The show was rebooted by TNT in 2012 and ran for three seasons before cost and declining ratings led to its cancellation. What started as Romeo and Juliet, but with oil, quickly morphed into King Lear, but with oil, when Larry Hagman's J.R. Ewing became the most compelling character for audiences. Fans either got a kick out of J.R.'s Machiavellian antics, or they wanted to see him get his comeuppance. But either way, they were drawn to him. Of course, like all shows that span the entirety of a decade, Dallas had trouble keeping up with the times. And by the time the recession hit in the late 1980s, people were worn out of opulence. And maybe that has contributed to the following generation's willingness to leave it in the dustbin of history. But its most endearing trait may be acting as such a distinct and clear simulacrum of America. America and Dallas were so synonymous in the 1980s that the Smithsonian Museum of American History actually has a replica of J.R.'s hat. And, and one of the more bizarre stories of world history Dallas may have precipitated the downfall of communism in the Eastern Bloc. You see, Romanian President Nicolae Ceausescu thought that Dallas was such an indictment of Western capitalism that he allowed the show to be aired in his country for propaganda purposes. It was one of the only American shows allowed on Romanian media at the time. In a move that monumentally backfired for Ceausescu, the Romanian people so loved the Ewing Capers that capitalism became popular and, in part, it led to the Romanian Revolution of 1989. I say monumentally backfired in that Ceausescu and his wife were caught trying to flee the country and were executed by firing squad on Christmas Day. So give it a whirl if you like soapy melodrama and or pop culture snapshots of peak capitalism and you have the time and or money. Seasons and individual episodes are available on YouTube, Amazon, and Vudu. And for those who are JR curious, I'll be doing an episode-by-episode -episode guide right here on this playlist.